Congress is back on Capitol Hill after a week-long break, just in time for sequester week. $85 billion in federal spending cuts are set to go into effect Friday if Congress doesn't act. Congressional correspondent Ed O'Keefe has been following this, of course, and he joins us now. So the deadline is Friday, March 1st. That's right. Um, today, let's start with today. They've got a few days before this deadline. What are they, it sounds like there's a lot of finger pointing going on, a lot of blame game. What is Congress actually doing to avoid this sequester? Not much of anything. I mean, there are proposals from Democrats and Republicans that would somehow avert all this from happening. Neither of those proposals, none of those proposals are expected to get serious up or down votes. And even if they get a vote in one chamber, it's not like the other one's going to pick it up and run with it right away. You know, often in these 11th hour deals, we suddenly get word that the president has called the congressional leaders, they're going to start huddling. But the congressional leaders have signaled they have no interest in doing that this time. And thus far, we haven't heard about any phone calls. So as far as we know, the cuts are actually set to happen come Friday. So this game of chicken seems to be getting more and more brazen. We remember the infamous debt ceiling That's showdown right. that went a day after the deadline back in 2011. Is this the new normal? Or I mean, do these deadlines just not matter anymore? You know, it, it certainly does appear to be. And I think if we blow through this one without fixing it, um, if anything, it's just going to be a test of how this has all gone. We've had a few of these uh, deadlines. I, I can count at least three. And frankly, we're probably losing track. Uh, if they blow through this one and the effects of it start to be felt and the country kind of shrugs its shoulders, Republicans are going to say, see, it's not that big a deal. Let's find ways to keep cutting. If the country does start to violently react, uh, March 27th is coming and that's the next big deadline because the short-term spending plan that's currently funding the government expires on the 27th. And there's some thinking that the White House and Congress will work out some kind of a deal where maybe the cuts continue, but cabinet secretaries would have more leeway on where exactly those cuts would occur. Or if the president has his way, there would be something regarding closing tax loopholes, or at least an agreement to tackle that in the coming months. But for now, it's all systems go. So we're hearing a lot from the president and those cabinet members about possible consequences right. if this deadline does come. Um, we've heard about possible you know, major cuts at the Pentagon. We've heard about reports that say that you know preschool and public health programs will see cutbacks. Yeah, the Homeland Security Secretary today said. Uh, border security could be affected, uh, right. long lines at the airports if TSA workers have to be furloughed. Right, and Republicans are just saying that that's, uh, that's just them trying to scare people. Why? They are, and, and, and I think that's where you're seeing the White House now push back, is they put all these numbers out there. The Republicans predictably said, this isn't a big deal. Now the White House is going to try to drive the point home by saying, no, it really is a big deal. And it's just going to come down to an argument of priorities and, and where the country really thinks uh, things should be and whether or not certain services that are offered are really important. Should be an interesting few days. Should be a very interesting few days. Thanks for coming by, Ed. Anytime.